Holy crap. We knew it was coming, but Intel didn't hold back when they slapped us in the face with everything they had. A slew of desktop CPUs, motherboards, and more. I've got tons to cover, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to GamerMeld. I've covered a good bit of this in the past through leaks, but now we've got everything straight from the source. So let's get started. First up, Intel announced a slew of new 8th Gen Coffee Lake CPUs. They basically fill in every possible gap in their current lineup, no matter how small. Before we get started, keep in mind that I'll have affiliate links to each of these in the description below. Starting off the list are the standard power processors. We've got two new 6-core, six 6-thread six CPUs, the i5-8600 and 8500, which gives us slightly higher base and turbo clocks over the current 8400. They line up a little oddly though. The 8500 has a 200 MHz base clock over the 8400 with a 100 MHz dump and boost. The 8600 flips this with a 100 MHz base frequency difference between it to the 8500, but a 200 MHz difference in the boost. Both offer support for dual channel DDR4 up to 2666. When it comes to pricing, the 8500's MSRP comes in at just $10 over the 8400, putting it at 192 US dollars. With the 8600, just $21 more than that at $213. Next up, we have the i3-8300, a four core, four thread CPU with a base frequency that's 100 megahertz higher than the 8100. Neither of which have boost clocks, but the 8300 has a 3 watt lower TDP and supports dual channel DDR4 up to 2400. The chip has an MSRP of 138 US dollars, which is $21 over the 8100. Now, with the prices given, keep in mind that this is Intel's suggested retail value, but as is usual with new CPU releases, they're priced a little higher until demand goes down. Lastly for the desktop CPUs, oh yes, there's a ton of them, we have effectively across the board T variants, which basically means lower TDP and power draw. These are all 35 watt variants, but have much lower clocks to get them at their rated TDP. Basically, you probably don't want to use these as gaming chips, so if it's got a T, you probably won't want it, unless you're aiming for an ultra small build without much heat dissipation. Each T variant is priced equally with their higher power sibling, and they range from the 8100T all the way up to the i7-8700T. Next up for today, Intel has finally released their budget boards for Coffee Lake. The main ones you'll want to take a look at are the B360 and H370 chipsets. The B360 comes with 24 I.O. lanes, 6 SATA ports, 12 PCI Express, 3.0 lanes, and 1 M.2 slot. The B360 is pretty much the best bang for your buck chipset for gamers who don't want to be tied down, but don't need all the added ports and frills. The H310 is the extreme budget chipset and isn't all that great for gaming given it only has 6 PCI Express 2.0 lanes, so there isn't much bandwidth for GPUs, but it does have 14 lanes for I.O. and 4 SATA 3 ports for your spinning disk storage. The final story for today is Intel's new Coffee Lake H processors and chipsets for notebooks, and they're really impressive. The launch is a full stack of CPUs that introduces the first mobile chip with the i9 moniker, as well as the first ever 6-core 12-thread mobile Intel chip. If you keep up with my videos, we've pretty much known this would happen, but it's great to see it fully come to fruition. As I go over these, keep in mind that all of these CPUs have a 45 watt TDP and come with the UHD 630 integrated GPU clocked at 1100 MHz. First in the lineup is Intel's flagship 6-core 12-thread CPU, the i9-8950HK. It's based off the almost comical at this point 14 nanometer plus plus process. It sports 12 megabytes of L3 cache and has a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz with a very impressive all-core boost of 4.3 gigahertz and a single-core boost of 4.8 gigahertz. Of course, as with all mobile chips, this is highly dependent on the cooling capability of any given laptop. Next is actually another 6-core 12-thread CPU, but one that doesn't hold to the i9 name, the i7-8850H. This CPU comes with 9 megabytes of L3 cache and comes with a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz, an all-core boost of 4.0 gigahertz, and a single-core boost of 4.3. Yeah, still impressive if you ask me. Of course, we're still waiting for 14 nanometer plus 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 squared. 2020, everyone? No? Uh, okay. Moving on, we have yet another 6-core 12-thread mobile CPU, the i7-8750H. It also comes with 9 megabytes of L3 cache, but has a base frequency of 400 megahertz lower at 2.2 gigahertz. It has an all-core boost of 3.9 gigahertz and a single-core boost of 4.2 gigahertz. Next up is our first quad-core CPU. 
the i5-8400H, which features 8 megabytes of L3 cache, a base frequency of 2.5 gigahertz, an all-core boost of 4.1 gigahertz, and a single-core boost of 4.2 gigahertz. The last consumer mobile processor is the 4-core 8-thread i5-8300H. The 8300H has the same 8 megabytes of L3 cache as the 8400H, but clocks in a little lower with a base frequency of 2.3 gigahertz, an all-core boost of 3.9, and a single-core boost of 4 gigahertz. For those who might be curious, I did say consumer mobile chips for a reason. They actually have Xeon chips in here that are basically the same as the consumer ones, but offer ECC RAM support, which isn't really something the average consumer needs. When it comes to real-world performance, compared to their last-gen flagship, Intel is quoting the i9 is up to 41% better in gaming, 32% better in streaming, and up to 59% faster in 4K video editing. Those are definitely impressive, but don't forget they're quote up too, so that's a best case scenario for sure. We won't know real world differences until reviewers can get their hands on notebooks powered by these beasts, so definitely look out for those. While that does it for today, what are you most excited about? Have you been waiting on a budget board for your new build, or is it time for a gaming laptop? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, definitely don't forget to subscribe for all things gaming hardware news and reviews. And as always, have a great day.